Good morning, everybody. I'm glad you all could make it out here this morning. My name is Drew Bartlett. I'm the Executive Director for the South Florida Water Management District, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here today to Pedro's office. <laughs> I hear that there is an exchange program between local officials and the National Park where you could change offices every once in a while uh, for six month periods. Mine overlooks a canal and an airport. So, you know, there are benefits to that, Pedro. Anyway, welcome. What a view, what a great way to kick off the Everglades Coalition Conference with progress and restoration. I wanted to recognize some folks that are here today. We have governing board members, Charlotte Roman, Cheryl Meads, and Chauncey Goss here from the South Florida Water Management District. We have Adam Gelber, who's the uh, Office of Ecosystem Restoration from Department of Interior. We have Dr. Wes Brooks, who's the Chief Resiliency Officer for the state of Florida. Is Arella Begay here? I haven't seen her, but she might. There she is. Hey, Arella. She's the Chief Resiliency Officer, I mean, for Chief Bay Officer for Miami-Dade County. We have Leah Padron, U.S. Senator Marco Rubio's office. We have Carlos Von Hul, Congressman, uh, who we got here? Carlos Jimenez here. There we go. And then we have Elsa Rodriguez from State Representative Jim Mooney's office. There we go. And we have Carmen Sotomayor from State Representative Juan Porras' office. Welcome. And thank you so much for all your support. Uh, without everyone's support uh, from the legislative side, this would not be happening. It's wonderful support. And then we have Dr. Do Dr. Tom Reinert from Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. And of course, we got all of our incredible park staff, district staff, and, and all of our supporters here for Everglades Restoration. Um, I will introduce the speakers uh, at, at some point here in the future. But to welcome you here, uh, my good colleague and, and partner in this restoration effort, I want to introduce to you our friend Pedro Ramos. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, Drew, you're going to have to work a little harder at trying to convince me to trade offices. You did pretty good, but I'm just saying you're going to have to work a little harder at that. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Everglades National Park, the mighty Everglades National Park, a place, yeah, a place that is not only loved by the American people, but also renowned internationally. One of the few places in our country that has and enjoys three international designations. World Heritage Site is a Ramsar wetlands of international importance, and it's also a biosphere reserve. A I just love how we are celebrating as much as we have over the past year. Uh, it is awesome and it is necessary. And most of the time, when I come up here to the podium, I'm looking at the park in the distance, in front of me, behind me, to the side, and I'm pointing at it. And it really is it, my and my staff's pleasure to welcome everybody to Everglades National Park today and Madam Assistant Secretary for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. It is wonderful to have you, boss, uh, here with us today. And I want you to know that it was, it was very significant and important to all of us that you also, as well as the chairman and so many other people here present today, made it to the 75th anniversary on December 3rd, which I thought was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work. I'm looking at Alison Gant and the team up there, but it was a lot of fun. Not too far down grass from here, as they say, Florida Bay collapsed in the most alarming of ways in the 1990s. And it was because there wasn't enough fresh water getting to it. And it was devastating and it took the Bay many, many years to recover. When that happened, it stopped all of us on our tracks. It opened our eyes. And people of Florida, the people of our country, and also people from all over the world demanded action. And I know I'm going to make 
some of you feel a little older. I'm feeling a little older myself. We're all getting a little older by the day. But 30-something years later, and here we are. 30-something years later, and here we are, and we are in a good place. Much like the critically important project, just upstream from here, the seepage wall project. This is not a massive, expensive project or complicated project, but it's a very, very significant project. It is very important because it'll help us get that water that Florida Bay really, truly needs. And for that, I thank our friends at the district uh, for getting this project going and funding it. We didn't fund it. You funded it. And that's a wonderful thing. It speaks about the partnership that we all have that is making the magic happen down here with all this work. And I also want to thank you and the team, Drew, and I don't know if you know this, Madam Secretary, but uh, they really have been doing this a lot as of late. Uh, and it is important to get together like this. They even have a media truck, which is really, really high tech. And the staff that run all this stuff is in the background here, thanks to them, because we must stay together. We must be together, we must stay together, because we have a tremendous amount of work ahead of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pedro. Um, when I, t when I was hired to be an executive director of the, at the governing board, uh, I talked with uh, our board member, Cheryl Meads, about a number of important things. But the one thing she said was very important was this project right here. And so, you know, here we are today. So I'm very happy and proud to introduce Cheryl Meads, governing board member uh, for the South Florida Water Management District. Thank you, Drew. I'm so excited to be here. You just can't imagine. So in 2010, I moved to Monroe County with my family full time, and we were full time residents there for 13 years. And we saw uh, a lot of things. But, you know, this groundbreaking to bring this water south and improve the flow here in, in Taylor Slough is so critical to life in South Florida. You know, we this district four years ago the governing board came together staff came together and we started a partnership a true partnership with stakeholders all of our stakeholders we've gotten to know them we care about them they we work with them and that's one of the reasons we right now have broken ground on 56 right 56 projects in four years and those projects are all over South Florida. We're working north in the conservation areas to keep them properly wetted. We are working in Biscayne Bay. We are working um, just everywhere. And I, I, I'm an over-talker, so I'd like to stand here and talk to you for 15 minutes, but I'm not. What I'm going to tell you is a personal story about how I ended up on the governing board in we uh, lived at mile marker 89375, so 90 miles north of Key West. And we had a bo boat basin, and I'm from North Carolina, where water is everywhere and is clean and fresh, the water I grew up with. In 2015, I had this incredible experience. A, um, I had a manatee give birth to a baby in my boat canal, I mean my, my boat basin. And I've had cows before, but never a little tiny one that looked like a gray potato. And I was so attached to that little animal, I would run out and sit and watch and watch it feed from other, under its mother's arm. And it was just three days of pure and absolute joy. And then something happened. Then the death and destruction showed up three days later because the seagrass die-off had started, unbeknownst to me. And I woke up one morning, and the, and the boat basin was full of seagrass. And the next day, there was more 
and more and more and it was deeper and it smelled and it was full of dead fish and my little sea cow was gone I, I'm sure they just went on to a safer place but it made me angry as I looked at that every day, day after day after day, and I started finding up, out what had happened. And so I, like many other people in Florida, headed to Tallahassee to, to try to fix, and I learned more and more about the problems. And when Governor DeSantis came in and was going to bring in new governing board members, it was that sea cow, that little baby sea cow, that had made me, it all made me so angry that I decided that I was going to raise my hand and learn more about this and get involved. And I want to, I want to leave you with Genesis 1.26. In Genesis 1.26, God tells us that he made us in his image. We are his image bearer. It says that he gave us authority over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the cattle in the field, and all of the animals and all of the things of earth that he gave human beings the authority over. And now we have taken that authority and we are healing the land. We are part of the largest restoration project in the world. And I have to tell you, I don't know about you, but I feel his pleasure. And to be a small part of such a big and monumental thing where human beings get an opportunity to choose between right and wrong. And we have cho chosen right, and we're putting so much work into it. Thank you, Drew and staff and for all of our partners in these successes. We're so very grateful. Thank you, Ms. Meads. I think you're gonna be okay, Shannon. Um, <laughs> the, it, it, uh, the next speaker is Shannon Estenos, no stranger to any of us, a warrior for the Everglades for her entire life. And uh, can't wait for your words, Shannon. Please come up here and, and celebrate this moment. Well, I don't, um, I can't believe you put me after Cheryl. I feel like we could just end this, end this with, with those beautiful, beautiful words, Cheryl, and that wonderful story. Um, for once, I'm going to talk a little bit just because I'm going to get rained on in a moment. Um, first of all, let me say this. I'm thrilled to see another white tent in the Everglades. I, I have now stood underneath several of them. I had no idea, Mr. Chairman, that it was 56. Cheryl, I think you said. It's astounding. I can probably um, echo many of you who are thinking, who have been maybe working on this for a few decades. I don't think I ever, everything okay? Um, I don't think any of us allowed ourselves or had the imagination to imagine two decades ago what this would feel like, what this part of restoration would feel like. And um, I'm here to tell you it feels awesome um, to be in this stage of the program where we are just almost on a weekly basis marking progress is, um, is astounding and it's a testament to so many things. It's a testament to a well-designed program. It's a testament to um, you know, a mission that for 30 years all of you and so many others have successfully communicated, but mostly it's a testament to all of you, to the shoulders you all stand on, to the people you stand next to. This is a program to, to, to kind of echo what I think the point Cheryl was making, that we as human beings have made a decision that we're going to reverse the mistakes of the past and we're going to do what's right, and you guys are doing it every single day. Florida Bay, Harry Truman said it, it's the last receiver of water. And um, being last in line means that for decades and decades and decades, upstream, water was diverted, water was lost. You guys are bringing water back to the bay. You are bringing the, the bay back to life. And that is an incredibly um, remarkable human achievement. And I hope you all just take a moment to savor the moment and to savor that. Um, 
what you all are doing, which you're doing it at a scale no one else on the entire planet is doing. So, so that's tremendous. Um, let me just end with two thoughts. Number one, these white tent events, keep having them. Keep marking this progress. You have really important people who believe in you really important people. You have the Florida legislature, you have the United States Congress, you have the governor of Florida, you have the president of the United States. They believe in you, they're investing in you, and they deserve as your investors to be kept apprised of the progress that you're making. So groundbreakings, yes, ribbon cuttings, yes, and then after the ribbon cuttings, get out there, measure the progress, because the other thing you're doing is you're showing the rest of the country that this is possible. Um, that, that thinking big and acting big on behalf of nature and of people is possible, um, even if it's hard and even if it takes a long time. I, I also want to say, just as a last thought, I just want you to know that I know groundbreakings are, are fun and ribbon cuttings are fun, but groundbreakings, you need to give yourselves two pats on the back because groundbreakings are harder to get to than ribbon cuttings are. Once you get the equipment out and the folks come in and they do their thing. A ribbon cutting is usually a smoother path to a ribbon cutting, but planning and funding and compliance and everything that goes into a groundbreaking, these are moments, really savor these moments. And I hope you have many, many more. Thank you for holding this event. Thank you for inviting me to be part of it. Congratulations to the Water Management District, the Governing Board, the staff, the Park Service, everybody here who had a hand in making this happen. I appreciate it. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks for being here. This is, uh, this is really, really meaningful for us. Um, this would not be possible without our partners at, at the state and Governor DeSantis and, and what he's done to try to empower us to get to all these events and to make this kind of progress is, uh, is really unprecedented. Um, we have uh, Dr. Wes Brooks, who is here. Uh, he's the state chief resiliency officer, works for the governor, uh, but he has been championing Everglades restoration for as long as I can remember. And so I'd love to invite Dr. Wes Brooks up here to make some comments on behalf of the state. Thanks, Drew. Um, I mean, I'll keep it really brief. Um, many of you will be at Everglades Coalition Conference tomorrow and hear me rattle on for 15 plus minutes at dinner. So, um, I mean, it doesn't get any better than this, right? I mean, this is incredible. Um, what the district and the National Park Service are, are going to work to do to bring more water into Taylor Slough. Um, I can't say enough about how important that is for, for the entire ecosystem. Everything that Governor DeSantis, the state of Florida, the Biden administration, um, and all of our partners uh, locally, right, the county governments as well, the tribes, um, you know, it's really important that we're doing the work we're doing just intrinsically because of how important this is. Um, how important our environment is, but it's also really important that we make sure that the nine million people that live in and around the system understand how vital it is for their continued existence with quality of life, always a struggle in South Florida, right? This is an answer. This helps, right? Uh, drinking water supplies, I, I'll, I'll go to bat. You know, I think we have some of the best drinking water in the world. Um, this is why. Um, so we just need to keep putting the pedal down on progress uh, on these projects. Um, and uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't also point out we're keeping the domestic golden shovel and giant scissor industry going, all right? And we're going to keep doing it. Thank you all very much for being here. Thank you, Dr. Brooks. We have a great partner in the Army Corps of Engineers that uh, really uh, work with us every day to try to bring restoration to South Florida. And I'm very honored to introduce Lieutenant Colonel Todd Polk, who's our partner in that restoration effort. Hey, thank you, Drew. Thank you so much for everyone. Um, wow, just what a group to follow. And, uh, you know, didn't we just do something like this yesterday? I mean, it, it is. It's uh, it's an amazing feat we're on. Or, we've undertaken and, and trajectory that we're on and, and so Secretary Aston, you, you, you have said it best the, the, the groundbreakings are the are the ones that are to, to need that celebration because they are so hard to get to we we take so long in, in a lot of ways uh, but we've, we've 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 endured I think the partnership is what is shown the ability to pick up one part of a project hand off another between us DOI 
so forth. It, you know, we, we, we wouldn't be here if we weren't all in this together. And I think when we look at Sir, I, I will stand here and say, I, I think we will see it. It's been 21 years. I think in the next 15 years, we're going to see what we have on that IDS right now. It's really come to fruition and it'd be amazing to see the gains we'll have by then. Um, from us, like just our combined operations pro, uh, plan and getting the water on the Tamiami Trail. I mean, that's, we've rolled up to about a million dollars the past or million, dollars, million acre feet of water the past two years. And I think we're going to see that every every year uh, from now on. And that's just those are numbers that are just amazing to hear. You know, that's what gets that water again with every little project, like the project of culverts uh, for Taylor Slough. Right. That's what feeds Rankin Bite, Garfield Bite. It's what gets down to Joe Bay. Um, in Terrapin Bay, you know, so and if you haven't been to those places, I urge you to get out there and see them for yourself. Get on the boat, get down into Flamingo, get out and see why we're sending all this water south and why it needs to be down there because you, you will see. Um, so, again, just uh, appreciate the invite. Thank you for such great partnership, and I know it will continue. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Polk. So the um – uh, Everglades Foundation, uh, we just celebrated their 30 years. Is that right? Where's Eric? 30 years. Um, and so they've been fighting for this. They've been fighting for Everglades restoration that long, and here we are. And so it gives me great pleasure to introduce their executive director, Eric Eichenberg. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, the um the, uh, it's, it's an amazing morning. Uh, a lot going through my mind as I sit here listening to, um, to these remarks. And with this backdrop behind me and in front of you, um, what comes to mind is uh, Nathaniel Reed, uh, George Barley, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, countless others uh, who are no longer with us, uh, who dedicated their lives to protect uh, this national treasure um, I've kept uh, Governor Senator Graham uh, informed of the progress that's been made, and I look forward to uh, doing that again after this, after this gathering. Um, you know, we Drew mentioned we're 30 years, uh, we're celebrating 30 years, and we we were founded because of an algae bloom and dead seagrass in Florida Bay in the early 1990s. And in 1993, two fishing buddies, separated by a generation, decided we needed to do something about it. And it's all rooted in science, the hydrology of this, uh, of this ecosystem. I want to acknowledge Dr. Melody Naja and her uh, dedicated uh, efforts and skills and uh, acumen on, on, this, on this topic. Uh, Dr. Steve Davis at the foundation, who has studied uh, he knows he's he, he he forgets more about Florida Bay than I know, but it's it's people like them and others other scientists who might be here today who have dedicated themselves um, to preservation of America's Everglades. You know this battle cry of sending water south. It started um, it started because of a crisis, and it is said to not let a crisis go to waste, uh, and we haven't done that. And this idea of storing, cleaning, and sending water in the direction that God intended it to go, it's a southerly direction. And it's supporting now a 21st century economy in this state, an economy that is built on tourism, an economy that is built on fishing and boating and recreation and real estate. That is the 21st century economy here, and it's all about water. It is all about water. And to have the ability to send water through a sheet flow and have the beneficiary of that be Everglades National Park and Florida Bay is what we are all fighting to do each and every day. I must say it's great to be with uh, Shannon Estenos, the Madam Secretary. I need to be formal there for a moment. Um, she has also dedicated herself over these decades to this cause. And I must say it was her vision a, no, a few short years ago when we couldn't find two dimes and a nickel in Washington to get bridges built along Tamiami Trail. And it was her vision that said, let's go to the state and try to get at least half the money to build the bridge. And she did. And Pedro's predecessor, they, I think they drove to Tallahassee, Dan Kimball. And Shannon uh, made the argument to Ananth Prasat, who was the secretary of DOT, that we need to bridge Tamiami Trail. And Governor Scott stepped up to provide half 
the money for that. That was a key moment, and it was your leadership that allowed that to occur. So here we are today with another groundbreaking uh, driving down. I was, uh, there's been so many, it's hard to remember <laughs> because there were times when we were desperate for moments like this. But it's because of the leadership, the political will, the unifying factor that this issue brings. You turn on the television, you open the newspaper, there are so many issues that not only divide us, but also bring us down because of what's happening in the world. This is a unifying issue. From the left to the right, all of it comes together because it's all about water. It's all about a national, it's, an, it's about a natural ecosystem nowhere else in the world that must be protected, and we're going to do it. This generation, standing on the shoulders of those that are no longer with us, are going to do it, and we're going to pass it on to Wes's daughter and the other children that may not be here, but we know they're going to be the stewards of this cause for generations to come. I am honored to be with each and every one of you in this fight on a daily basis. There is district, there's park staff, there's people that are behind the scenes each and every day that do the work that get us to the point where we are today, we salute each and every one of you because you're the tireless soldiers in this effort. We thank you all. Drew, thank you for inviting me. Long live the Everglades. So while this event marks an incredible uh, you know, effort to restore the Everglades, it also marks the beginning of the Everglades Coalition Conference. So I was very grateful to be able to, for them to accept the invitation to speak uh, to, to, at this event and is the co-chairs of the Everglades Coalition. And I'll start with Mark Perry with the uh, Oceanographic Society and Stewart. Mark, where are you? There you are. Yeah, come on up, Kelly. And we also have Kelly Cox with, the, with Audubon uh, kicking off this event. All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kelly Cox. I'm the director of Everglades Policy with Audubon, Florida, and it's so great to be here with you today as a co-chair of the Everglades Coalition with Mark Perry as we kick off our 38th annual conference in Coral Springs this weekend, and we look forward to seeing so many of you there tonight. And it's even greater to be able to celebrate and commemorate this, this amazing occasion, right, here in Everglades National Park and in Taylor Slough. Restoration momentum is just flowing into the Everglades, and I think we all feel that, and that's part of the reason why our conference theme for this year is a watershed moment for America's Everglades. We are bringing more water south into the river of grass, and that's critical not only for the ecology, but for the birds and the wildlife that call the Everglades home, as well as for our own continued prosperity, our economy, um, and also our community, right? This Everglades behind us protects our communities from storms. It provides fresh drinking water for millions of us here in South Florida. And it is just a critical part of our cultural heritage. And at Audubon, we've been studying the health of the Everglades and its iconic bird species for uh, almost 100 years, particularly here in Taylor Slough. And Dr. Jerry Lorenz, who is here with us today. Hey, Jerry is our state research director. And while I know that it feels like 100 years, it's been a little more than 30, where he has just been a force for good, driving efforts and research on wading birds and our hydrology and ecology here in Florida Bay. And we're so grateful for his leadership. And because of our longstanding history at Audubon here on Florida Bay and in the Everglades, we know that the connectivity that this project is going to bring into Taylor Slough is going to meaningfully improve the salinity regime it's going to support uh, habitat and wildlife all throughout Florida Bay, and we really look forward to continuing to monitor Taylor Slough and these results as we realize the benefits of this project. So thank you to the district and to the park and to our core partners for making this happen. And with that, I will turn it over to Mark Perry, uh, Executive Director and CEO of the Florida Oceanographic Society, who is also my beloved co-chair at the Everglades Coalition. Thanks, Mark. That's great. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. I think it's, uh, Kelly puts it right, and it's really important that we kind of understand the history and the connectivity of what's going on. And I appreciate all everybody coming to recognize that, you know, those of us might work up in the upper part of the system, all the way up in the upper chain of lakes or Kissimmee or all the way down to Okeechobee and those northern sections. And then, then we get down here and we see how it all comes down and how, how it all is supposed to be. And, and it really is fulfilling for us to kind of, get involved in all the parts of the system. And that's what the great thing about the coalition, all 60 plus members are really about uh, 
all over the system really coming together for that common cause and that's to get our Everglades restored. And you know, the, the Taylor Sioux project here is a part of this, of this historic moment, I think, for, for Everglades restoration. I think we're, we've seen a flurry of, of you know, ground breakings and ribbon cuttings. And, and as, as said, we who've been in it for a while are, are really getting excited and a little confused. Hey, which one is this? You know, I mean, this is exciting. This is an exciting time and it's a, and it's a critical time that really brought us to understand our theme for that conference for the conference this year and that is it's a watershed moment for America's Everglades mm -hmm. a watershed moment and that means it's it we we really thought about that because it's about the momentum that's carrying on these projects have now started to happen you know 56 projects are underway or in the works are being completed you know not just a, a ribbon cutting you know it's good to go to because now it's done and it's open and it's going but even groundbreakings are started it's going to happen um, they're exciting times and we need to continue this we need to strongly move forward with this momentum we can't take our foot off the gas mm -hmm. we need to keep pushing and pushing to get this completed and done not just for like our lifetime but for those who are coming after us and to to really understand what restoration of the Everglades is all about. And I want to thank all of our co our coalition members, all these organizations, big and small, who work really, really hard to kind of get this done. And and they've, you know, really put a lot of effort into it. And But there's also a lot of people that, you know, have, have come together in our agency groups. And as they change over the years and things get a little slower at times and faster at other times, we're, we're finally at this point where we feel like, wow, all this is coming together and there's a lot of momentum and we can really get this done. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank the what, South Florida Water Management District, the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, the Department of Interior, Everglades National Park. These agencies are now working together, not just your jurisdiction, your jurisdiction. They're all coming together for this this momentous occasion and that is pushing the pedal to the metal and get this gas let's get this thing done i love the everglades this is <laughs> when i come down here it's like wow this is this is a moment for me to look out here and see this and and just see the beauty and understand it uh i just thank you thank you everybody for your participation you're getting involved and in making this happen but thank you everybody for just having us here to be able to help celebrate this moment Thank you, Mark, Kelly. So one more story. So the um, Pedro, like old roads plagued this park, right? Um, and we got the bridges, we got the bridges up. We're working on Tamiami Trail. And then there was an older road, old Tamiami Trail that was right there in the way. We took that out. And now there's another old road, Old Ingram Highway, that used to be the road going out to Flamingo. Well, that's the, that's the road that we're working on this time. And so it's been, I wish Bob Johnson were here, right? Because he's been talking about this forever. Um, but there was a conversation, you know, a couple of years ago about, you know, we're putting this wall in. Why don't we, you know, there's another obstacle, this old Ingram Highway. And John Mitnick was part of that conversation. And he said, we can do that. We can fix that. And so he's in the back. I have Rich Virgil and his team. Where is Rich? There's Rich over there. Uh, and all of Rich's team, he's part of our field operations. We're not hiring a contractor to uncork this old Ingram Highway. The Water Management District staff are going to uncork this highway, right? And they are ready to get busy. And uh, so if you see a, a blue, someone wearing blue with an SFWND hat on their head, thank them for their efforts. So thank you. Thank you, Rich, uh, for all that. Let's get these shovels and, and start this project. So all the speakers, if you could come up and governing board members, Let's get this, this show rolling.